Good boy. Hey friendlies, it's Carolyn Capone and welcome back to our RV life. Today's frequently asked questions are all about this guy, all about Capone. <laughs> what do you say? You want to answer questions for viewers? What do you say? Today I'm going to answer all the frequently asked questions I get most about Capone and Capone's RV life. Number one, I'm going to talk about his breed and kind of his story. Second, I'm going to talk about what he eats. And third, I'm going to talk about uh, his leash. And a lot of you are always questioning why he's not on a leash more. And so I'm going to cover all of those questions for you today. And um, we'll hopefully get to know Capone a little bit better. What do you say? Are you ready? Let's talk about Capone. So Capone's 13, his birthday is in March. He'll be 14 in March. And uh, he's, he's what I call a double rescue. He was originally rescued from a, uh, I don't know, either a Rottweiler or a German Shepherd <laughs> rescue. I'm not really sure which. Um, I thought he was a Rottweiler, but he might be, he might be German Shepherd. I don't know. Anyway, the guy who rescued him was young and kind of going through a lot. And the dog ended up with his mother. His mother was actually didn't want him at all and was about ready to take him to the pound. Huh? When my ex-husband and I got him, huh? And we got him to keep our older dog, JT, who was a 125 pound rot, uh, rot and chow mix company while we both worked we thought it would be nice for the two dogs to hang out together well my other dog JT here why don't you sit my other dog JT had a little bit of an aggression streak so when we first brought Capone home even though they did really well in the meet and greet in the park uh when we, once we got him home it was a little bit more of a challenge yeah <laughs> JT uh kind of made Capone's life hell for a few days until I stepped in and and let him know who was alpha in the house huh and uh, so Capone has been with me now since he was six months old. And when uh, he, oh, he's, he's supposedly part lab and part rot. And uh, he acts like a, more like a lab. He's always acted more like a lab. Um, you know, he's like super passive, loves everybody, super easygoing, and um, doesn't have any aggression issues like my other dog had, huh? And uh, he weighs about 55 pounds. And uh, the last few times, we've been to the vet several times in the last year and a half, several times since we've been on the road, and he's extremely, extremely healthy. We've been to vets from Washington to Tennessee, <laughs> and the one thing they always say is, wow, I can't believe he's 13. He's in really, really great shape. And I think part of the reason he's in such great shape is because he's always gotten a ton of exercise. I mean, we, we've, I've always taken him out on walks and hikes. And um, the last vet we went to in Washington was really impressed with his weight. He said, you know, for a dog his age, he couldn't believe how fit he was. And I was like, yeah, if only it was that easy for me to stay <laughs> as fit. Um, it's easy not to feed Capone a lot. And uh, so he's extremely, extremely healthy. The only, uh, the only thing that we're having to kind of keep an eye on now is he does have an elevated kidney enzyme. And that's part of the reason I've taken him to the vet the last uh, few months more in the last few months is because we've been keeping an eye on it to see if it's something that we really have to, um, you know, start treating or, or uh, you know, if it's slow or if, it, it, if the test was an anomaly. When we went in Washington, it had elevated uh, from Tennessee last year, just slightly. And what that means is he's probably going to end up having kidney failure, kidney problems. And, uh, the, the vets always just say, put him on a, on a low protein diet. And so that's what I've done. And so that brings me to the next question. What does Capone eat? No, Capone is not vegan, uh, but his stomach has gotten really sensitive over the years and he he's always eaten, eaten chicken or turkey. In fact, when uh, JT was still alive, I used to make their food. Once a month, I'd buy a giant turkey and mix it with carrots and uh, brown rice, I think. And that would be their food. So he's always eaten turkey or chicken, but he's gotten older and his stomach gurgles and he's got a lot more stomach issues. So now I'm feeding him salmon and sweet potato grain-free food. Uh, and I did a lot of research when I put him on commercial food and, um, and Kirkland, Costco's Kirkland rated as one of the highest quality protein foods there are. And it's a really good price. So that's what he eats. He eats the, uh, what is it? Nature's Best, I think it's called from, from Costco. And I do, I buy the big 20, 20 pound, I guess it's 20 pound. No, it's probably more than that 40 pound bag. And that's what he eats. But since he has to be on a low protein diet, what I do is I give him about half kibble and then half uh, sweet potatoes 
and peas or he eats spinach he eats kale and so i'll mix some really good leafy vegetables in there with it he also um Okay, and I also have to heat it up for him. So I think his teeth might bother him sometimes. He stopped eating. I think the crunchy kibble might have been bothering him. So I cook his food now so that it gets nice and soft and it smells really good while it's cooking. And so he gets really excited about eating again. Uh, he also is on glucosamine. He's been on glucosamine probably since he was about seven. I noticed after a particularly long hike, I think we did like eight or nine miles one day. And oh, he was sore. Hi, you want a treat? He was sore for a couple of days. And so from then on, he's been on glucosamine. And right now I'm feeding him hemp chews. Uh, you know what, I'll put a link to the hemp chews that I feed him. I don't know if, they should be available in every state. I get them on Amazon. And they're hemp and glucose. They work really well. I mean, look at him, he moves really well. His mobility is good. I mean, he's slow. He slowed down quite a bit. He's, he's really slow now. Um, and that brings me to, so I guess that covers food. He eats twice a day, right? And he gets treats, grain-free, salmon, sweet potato and jerky bites. Thank you, these are from a viewer. These are still Christmas. We're still working through the Christmas treats that we, we probably, I can't even, I mean, 30 packages of treats, I think maybe. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, that's what he eats. And that's, he's extremely healthy. He is a very happy, very healthy dog, aren't you? Yeah, he, he struggles a little bit getting up the steps sometimes and up on the bed. He still likes to sleep on the bed. And so sometimes I'll, I'll pick him up and, and get him up um, and pick him up and put him in the rig just to help his bones a little bit. And sometimes I'll give him a little massage on his joints. <laughs> but he's my buddy, huh? But I get a lot of flack for not keeping Capone on the leash all the time. And um, so those of you, some people say you can't even watch me anymore because you get so stressed out by my life and the decisions that I make and the choices that I make for Capone and myself. So maybe I can put your mind at ease a little bit. Uh, Capone and I have lived together for 13 years. I know him. He knows me. We have a relationship. We trust each other. Uh, and I know that Capone is a smart dog with really good instincts. He's never, ever, ever chased a car, run into the road, ever. Um, one time. <laughs> one time. He was actually in the back seat of my car and he saw a rabbit or a cat. I was getting gas. The back window was open. He jumped out of my car window across four lanes of traffic after a cat. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, that was young Capone. <laughs> that was young Capone. And that that's the, the thing. Young Capone was not always on a not always off leash like you see now. Young Capone, even though he that was the only time he ever ran into traffic. Um I I even in when I walked in the suburbs with him, he, he was on a leash. You know, I didn't walk down busy streets without him being on a leash. That was young Capone. This is old Capone. Capone doesn't chase things. He chased a rabbit the other day for like six inches. He won't chase birds anymore because he knows he can't chase birds. So he's not going to run into traffic. I also know that my dog, what he does, his breed or whatever, he's a sniffer. His nose is constantly down, especially because of the way we live. Uh, you know, his, his nose is in fire pits. His nose is in people's crap that they leave behind. That's another story. We'll do a leave no trace video. Uh, but his nose is, I mean, seriously, if there's a speck of food within a square mile, he will find it. So that's what he does. So when I'm walking with him, um, I am confident because he's slow poking behind me, slow, slow, sniff, 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 sniff. I'm really confident that if I see, if that if there's, you know, if, if there's something to be worried about, a bear or a moose or something like that, I'm going to see it before he does. And I also off leash in a new spot until I've been there a while. I will not let him out out of my sight in a new spot for the first 24 hours at least. I want to get to know a spot. I want to make my my um, presence known, you know, my generator, my laptop even with the, you know, if I'm watching TV or whatever, my voice, talking to Capone. Uh, once I'm here for a while and I pretty much have established my presence so that most wildlife is going to know I'm here and I've gone for walks, I've looked for prints, I've looked for scat so that I have a general idea of what's in the area. 
Only then do I feel comfortable letting him have a little more freedom. And still, even a little more freedom. Here in Alaska, I'm keeping an eye on him a lot closer than I do in the lower 48 because there is a larger concentration of bears and wildlife. And so, I mean, he's never out of my sight. Okay, almost never. Like just now, he's sitting here right now. But, you know, sometimes he'll go over there. But I've been in the spot for four days now. There's enough people here. I haven't seen any wildlife other than birds, angry birds, <laughs> um, chipmunks. He was having fun with a chipmunk the other day. Uh, but I really do, I'm a, a, you know, what's, what's the number one, number two, number one uh, safety tip I always recommend? Be aware of your surroundings. And by being aware of my surroundings, I am, um, I am able to give Compone a little bit more freedom. And that means he doesn't always have to be on a leash. It's funny, I've gotten several emails lately from people who say, oh my gosh, all those people who must complain, who complain about leashes must be city people because in the country, we don't worry about it. I have not seen a single dog on a leash. Okay, I've seen a few dogs on leashes, little dogs here in Alaska. But most people in the country, you could probably relate. Most people, <laughs> what do you think? Most people in the country, their dogs just run loose on their farms and on their property all day long. And uh, so, yeah, you know, he doesn't always have to be on a leash. And I think that's part of what has kept him <laughs> so healthy and young is that he gets to be a dog. He gets to sniff. He gets to explore. He gets every, you know, look at all the, look, he's a very well-traveled dog. What, how many states have we been to? 25 or something? Uh, and I think that really keeps him young, you know, and dogs have really good instincts. I think he senses, um, I think sometimes when there might be things out there that, that could harm him, he stays closer to me. Instinctually, he'll stay closer to me. And since we've been in Alaska, instinctually, it's funny, I test him sometimes. If I'm out of his sight, he'll go sniff, 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 and he won't let me, and I'll hide to see how long it'll take him. Within a couple minutes, he's running up looking for me. In the lower 48, that doesn't happen. He'll be gone for a half hour. In the desert, he'll be gone for a half hour. <laughs> Um, and once I started realizing he was doing that and started thinking that maybe he couldn't find his way home, he was getting older and maybe senile, uh, I did start uh, leashing. I did buy a leash, so I, I tie him up outside the rig so he can't wander. And uh, so, yeah, you know, I care about him. I love my dog. I care about him. I do my best to take care of him and also just to make sure he lives a happy, healthy doggy life. Um, <laughs> that's a cute shot right there, isn't it? Um, you know, just like me, I mean, I could be safe and sound living in a traditional life and living a slow death, and so could he, but I choose to have a little bit more freedom, even if that comes with a little bit more risk. So that's my dog. He's up to date on all his shots. The health certificate that I read about needing to get into Alaska, I didn't need. They just asked, asked if he was update on, uh, up to date on all the shots. And last time he went for three-year rabies. And, oh, let's talk about flea ticks and stuff like that. So he, um, when I left Washington, I put him on Brefecta something. I'll put it in the description. The, the, the oral pill for heartworm, roundworm, fleas, and ticks. And because um, I wasn't sure what I would need up here, I recently called a vet in, uh, in Anchorage and I said, yeah, I'm out. I, I need um, a new prescription. And we got to talking and she was like, we don't, in Alaska, we don't treat for those things. I have not had a single tick since we've been up here. And we, even when he's treated for ticks, we get ticks. No ticks, no fleas. And they said heartworm is not an issue up here. Even though there's a ton of mosquitoes, they are not heartworm carrying mosquitoes. So I've not, I love Alaska. <laughs> We've not had to worry about that up here. So that's been really good. But um, when we get down to the lower 48, it depends on where they are. I don't always keep them on heartworm medicine. In the desert, it's not necessary. Uh, when I was in the East Coast last year, when I was uh, Southeast, I put them on heartworm, very high. Um, mosquito in the south and Tennessee and Georgia and Alabama. So he was on heartworm last year. And of course, every time I do put him on heartworm, he has to get a heartworm test, but I'm willing to pay for the heartworm test if that means he doesn't have to be on it all the time. I would prefer to not have to give him pills all the time, right? Huh? What do you think? You love treats, don't you? So I think that's it. I think that covers Capone. Capone's RV life. What do you think? He's a happy, very happy, healthy dog, aren't you? Especially when I'm giving you treats. I love my dog. Best traveling companion ever. Huh. Great listener. Huh. Doesn't talk too much. 
He begs a little. Huh, you beg a little. <laughs> okay, hope that answers some of the questions you've had about Capone and Capone's life and who Capone is and his health and wellness. And uh, I'll see you next time. I'll see you next week for another set, another episode of Frequently Asked Questions. And in the meantime, be happy, be free, say, <gasps> be kind. Mwah. What do you think? I think you've had enough. You're going to get fat. I think you've had enough. What do you think? <laughs>